you could keep it if it hasn't changed since the law is passed. So we wrote into the Affordable Care Act, you're grandfathered in on that plan. But if the insurance company changes it, then what we're saying is they've got to change it to a higher standard. They've got to make it better. And that was President Obama last night speaking at Organizing for Action, Action, Action. And this is Power Play, and welcome back. Now, that's a big if. That is a, actually a giant if. It is an if on which a presidential election very well could have hinged uh, that if the president would have said if to voters in swing states in 2012, they might have thought that perhaps he shouldn't still be president. But he didn't. They did. He is. What happens now? Uh, people who know are David Mercer. He is a Democratic strategist, yes, and he is the former Deputy National Finance Director for the Democratic National Committee. He is uh, a Democrat for hire. He is smart and knows stuff, and he is followable at Beltway. Isn't that cool? That is cool. <laughs> Daniel Garza is cool, too. He is the Executive Director of the Libre Initiative. How was that one? That was perfect. That was perfect. See? Exactly. <laughs> nice feedback. I'm drinking Cuban coffee every time before he comes on just to get the right vibe. Uh, but Daniel Garza is, is, in fact, the executive director. And what they are trying to do is uh, talk about, I, I want to get this just right, economic issues as it relates to reaching out to the Hispanic community in the United States and incorporating them into a conservative vision for the future. Very well. Did sure. Take it? Yeah. Hey. Freedom. Yeah. All right. Okay. Freedom. <laughs> freedom. Everybody is pro freedom. Absolutely. It just comes in different flavors. Uh, all right. Now, the here's the thing, David. I keep watching all of the coverage. I keep watching all of these people talk about. It. I uh, my my heart goes out to Ron Fournier, who is writing like, when do we call it a lie? As if somehow at some moment the president is going to walk out and go, you know what? I lied. I didn't, you know, I didn't intend for you to keep your coverage. The caveat was understood for us alone and us only, and da-da-da-da-da. He's not going to do that. He, there's no reason for him to do that. What he's going to do, as pretty obvious last night, is go out and say, if I can keep a third of my people with me, I can community organize my way into this sucker. Keep a th if the other side is at each other's throats and hopelessly divided, if you can keep a third of the electorate together, the people he was talking to last night, ash me, move on, all of these guys, if you keep the left left all together, this is survivable for him without doing much. Well, not only is it survivable for him, but uh, hopefully uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act will allow for others uh, to survive whatever illnesses they have. And that's the whole purpose and the gist of all of this, is to have a uh, Affordable Care Act implemented, get the website running by the end of the month so that we can have people who have access to affordable health care. And as we're learning more and more with the stories that we initially heard of people's premiums going up, we're finding out that those people actually didn't even go to the exchanges to find out that they could have lower uh, premiums and more benefits uh, attributed to their policy. So I think as time goes on, and we do have until March for people to get enrolled, that we will see people having more access to care and survivability going up as a result of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel? 3.5 million have already lost or their are going current to, or, plans, yeah. are going to lose their yeah. plans. And the vast majority of them are going to pay higher premiums, higher deductibles, and they're going to have inadequate benefits. So you tell me if you know, we get an affordable care. Uh, the problem, look, the problem um, is two-sided. One is, of course, that this is going to damage the president's legacy. It was disingenuous at best. To tell the American people straight up, unequivocally, right. if you like a plan, you're going to keep it. Period. Now you have all these conditions and qualifications that come with it after the fact. So, you know, people are smart. You know, they're not stupid. And, and they're kind of, you know, understanding that, in, in a sense, you did lie to us. You know, you were, you were being disingenuous. Well, it was cer certainly elided and certainly misled, led people to believe something that was not so. Well, if, if I can say if something to that, to his, Daniel's point, 97 <clears throat> percent of um, the, those that are being insured get to keep their plans, uh, plans that they like. We're talking about a smaller um, uh, group within who, within uh, to be insured in the private sector Indiv individual. individually, that are, for the most part, would have experienced rollovers or renewals and so forth. What we also have to qualify in this whole scenario and situation is that insurers are writing these letters saying by this deadline actually before the exchanges went up right. we need you to enroll in what was to be a higher 
cost insurance program because they knew that when the exchanges rolled up and the information about lower cost insurance would be there available to them and they would lose them. So, you know, once this works its way through and people become more educated about their options without being pressured by the insurers to, to get on their higher cost insurance, I think you'll see a satisfied that, that's exactly the consumer. Problem. You know, he <clears throat> says that you know, once this works its way through, right. what we are seeing here also is that Obamacare also is going to rot a lot of uh, new regulations, mandates, fees, fines, uh, taxes onto the industry. Now, is the, are the insurers going to pay for the regulations, the cost of regulations? No, we are. Are the insurers going to pay for the added taxes that's going to come with Obamacare? No, we are. The middle class. Those I'll make who you, are already let me make you. I want to make you gentlemen a prediction. You can test me on it later. Is that six months from now we're going to be subsidizing the insurance industry because they're going to smack down regulations on these guys and they're going to be squeezing and pushing and the young people aren't going to sign up because the product launched it made the sound of a whoopee cushion when the product came out uh, the Medicaid people are enrolling the people who desperately need insurance because they were previously unable to get coverage because they had pre-existing conditions are enrolling the people with subsidies are enrolling but we're not getting the desirable customers for the insurance industry the rates are going to go up I predict to you that after six months of populist pitchfork talk, we are going to end up cutting a check. The Treasury is going to cut a check somehow to big insurance to caulk in the gaps that will be occurring. Am I crazy? Absolutely. Can I I've been yeah, a counter prediction is that just like Medicare Part D, which had uh, unfavorability that was pretty high. People oh. didn't know about it. That's true. Oh, this the is implementation, Medicare Part D, the implementation Medicare Part D was 10% of 10% of the, the people. This the, is 85 yeah, But the, the implementation country. part was very disastrous. Oh, and yet you can't Mercer. find a senior who is experiencing the benefits of Mercer. Medicare Part D that would that you doesn't like it. And six months from now, you will see the same uh, transition. And four years after Lyndon Johnson enrolled Harry S. Truman as the first enrollee in Medicare, 10% of the entire population of the nation was enrolled happily in this law. This will not be the case with Obamacare. No way. We'll see which prediction well, comes right. forward. Let, let, <laughs> let's not forget the, the insured that are becoming uninsured. Those who had jobs who are becoming part-time jobs. Those who already have current insurance are going to pay higher taxes and more on regulations. But also young Hispanics who are being called to sustain this program financially to opt in. There's 10 million Hispanics who are uninsured, and they said, you know, these are the, the, this is the yeah. one of the... the they're putting the, a new website up for it. Yeah. Well, well, that'd be nice if they well, could put it up already process, in, in Spanish right. even. Right. But, I mean, the fact is, remains uh, that most of the folks, 10 million Hispanics uninsured, most of them are the young that they're trying to induce to, to you know, basically sustain... As the Coach Brothers are on college campuses so, trying to get people not to get insurance. <laughs> well, why, why would they? They, they? they don't need to, and, 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 and they're going to get screwed. We got to go. We got to go. Blue Goose agrees with me and says that the bailout is baked into the legislation. I bet that that is true. There is probably a bailout baked into every piece of legislation somehow in this town. Mock Tank says there are more people losing their health coverage than want the Redskins to change their name, and we are told that is a big group. These people make good points, and they make them, even though the chat is now today, by tweeting at me, at C. Steyerwald. It's fun and excellent to do, and while you're there, you can follow Daniel Garza. You can also take the, if you haven't already, though you probably have, follow David Mercer at Beltway. And I will be right, and David Mercer is going to buy me steak for lunch. That is another prediction <laughs> that I am willing to make. Gentlemen, we thank you for making time for us today. You, Internet, we're not done with you yet. Ellison Barber from the Free Beacon is here, and you know what she's going to do? She's going to uh, parse the various strands of Christism. Chris Christie, a.k.a. Pufferfish, will he be able to float onward to a presidential Republican nomination? Maybe. We'll talk with her when we come back. ...of decisions that we have in all of these races. It will be good. It will be fun. So you should do that.